Let's do some analysis on the bubble sort. Here we have a list that we used in the card animation process. So let's process these to see how it works out. And remember the idea here is that the king is essentially going through his kingdom trying to find neighbors that are out of sorts with each other. Well, immediately he finds that the five and the three are indeed out of position, so we need to make that swap. And then the five and the seven are fine, but the seven and the one are out of position, so we need to make that swap. Same with the seven and the two, and with the seven and the four. So at the end of one pass, this is the order of the list, and let's take a look at the number of steps that it took. We had five comparisons, but we had one, two, three, four swaps. So that's a total of 12 steps for the swap. And that makes a total of 17. That's a lot of work. So let's try it again. We go back to the beginning because we had to make at least one swap. We have to do another pass. The three and the five are good, but the five and the one need to swap. So one, five, two, four, seven. The five and the two need to swap, two, five, four, seven, and the five and the four need to swap, four, five, seven, and that's the end of that pass. So we still have the two and the one and the three in those positions. The number of steps was five for comparisons, and we had one, two, three swaps this time for a total of nine steps. So that total pass cost 14 steps. Now we go back and do it again. Clearly the three and the one need to swap. So one, three, two, four, five, and seven. The three and the two need to swap. But the rest of the list is fine. So we finished that pass. That wasn't too bad. So the cost here is, again, five comparisons. And we had two swaps. So that's a total of six steps. The total cost is 11. Now, since we had to make a swap, we still need to make a pass through that. So we go through and we see that there are no elements out of position. So we draw another blank line here. This double line here is a good indication that we have a clear pass. So the final pass still had a cost of five, but there were zero swaps. So the total cost was simply five. If we add these up, 17 and 14 make 31, plus 11 is 42, plus five is 47. So the total cost here is 47. Now let's do some analysis. The 47 steps is still close to 36, and it is indeed an average case with a running time of O of N squared. The best case would be when the elements are already in order, and this would be an amazing five steps. If you think about it, it's gonna be just like this final step that we did here. It's just verifying that it's a clear pass. So the running time there is an O of N, which is very good. The worst case would be when the elements are in reverse order. That takes a whopping 75 steps. That's more than twice 36. So it would be like two N squared, but we don't care about the two. It's still considered N squared. So the conclusion for the bubble sort is it's a volatile process and it's best used to verify a sorted list worst when the list is random or in reverse order with the running time of O of N squared. Now it's time to take a look at the pseudocode for the bubble sort, which uses a nested loop process, as you remember from the card animation and the trace that we just went through. So here it is. It still has a swap process down here, but that's identical to the one we looked at with the selection sort. It's called right here. And we look at the two loops and you have a while loop it says while not done. To get into this while loop, done has to be false. So that's the reason we assign this to false. But as soon as we step into the loop, we assign done to true. This is assuming that the list is already in order. So the king goes from the beginning position all the way up to the second to the last position of the loop and looks for neighbors that are out of sorts. So this is the if statement that does that. If the value at the position one step beyond the king is less than the value that the king is standing on, then we swap those two values. And you can see that we swap list and k and k plus one are the two positions that we send to the swap process. And immediately we say done is false. And that's the end of the if statement. 
That's the end of the K loop. The king keeps going through. And the while loop will keep going as long as done is false. And if we did have a swap, done is false. So that's what keeps the loop going. As soon as we have a clear pass and the king never has to make any swaps, done remains true. And that will stop the while loop when we get there and we'll end the process. So study this code carefully so that you completely understand what's happening with the bubble sort.